Hey, I'm Corey Jones from Safety Man Consulting, safetyman.co. Like, follow, listen, share, and subscribe. There'll be little buttons up there towards the end of the video where you can do that. And please share these things. If you're watching this on Facebook, you can still like it and you can still share it. Or you can leave me comments or questions about things you'd like me to address in the future or challenge me on some of the things that I'm saying. If you have a better answer or, or a better description of something, I, by all means, don't think that I know everything. So I'm always open to learn. I learn every day about different things. Today we're going to talk about weapons other than guns. My last eight or nine videos have been about firearms because that's what everybody's coming to me for nowadays. First time gun owners wanting to learn how to shoot firearms. Today we're going to talk about other weapons. The first one I want to talk about is a stun gun. A stun gun. It is not like it looks on TV. You don't just come up and touch somebody with it and they pass out and they wake up a half hour later in the trunk of a car. Okay? A stun gun must come into contact with your attacker to create localized pain. And the longer you hold it on there and the deeper you penetrate, the more likely you could get temporary muscle impairment, which could give you a window of opportunity to escape. Okay, a stun gun is a contact weapon. It does not work unless it is touching the bad guy. A taser also uses electricity, can also work as a stun gun at contact distance, but is designed to work up to 15 feet away. 15 feet away. That's about half a first down if anybody watches football. I know Tom Brady kind of ruined the Super Bowl for everybody. But it's about 15 feet away. It uses electricity. If you get two probe hits, it can temporarily disable your attacker for up to 30 seconds. It is designed for you to deploy the probes, drop the taser on the ground, and then run away to safety. The new taser Pulse Plus also has Auto 911, which is attached to your mobile phone and will automatically dispatch police officers to the location of your mobile phone and let them know that a taser was deployed so they'll be expecting that when they get there. Taser also has a safe escape policy where if you use your taser in self-defense and file a police report, taser will replace it, I will replace it if you get it from me free of charge. Charge, there's a good pun there. Other weapons, knives. I'm not a big believer in carrying a knife as a sole purpose for a self-defense weapon. One, because nobody I've ever seen trains in a knife and how to access it, deploy it, where to cut, how to cut, where to slash, and what to do to create enough immediate injury to stop the attacker, to give you that window of opportunity to attack in a different direction and end the encounter or escape safely. Chances are you're going to hurt yourself trying to get it out, get it open, and stab somebody if it doesn't have the right type of finger guards on it. So if you are going to get a knife, go to a class and learn how to fight. There are classes all over the country that will teach you how to do that, the best knife to get, the one that has the finger guard and all those different things on it so you don't cut yourself. The body's pretty resilient. It's not like TV. You don't just stab somebody and they don't just fall down. Do not let Hollywood be your guide on how to defend yourself, okay? If you are going to use a knife, you have to use it in an area where it's going to cause immediate disabling injury in the throat, in the eyes, in the groin. That's going to create immediate disabling injury so you can get to a safe area or finish the fight so this person does not, does not hurt you or anybody that you are with. And obviously, anytime you deploy any self-defense weapon, you must report it to the police and file a report, or you're going to be a suspect in a crime. A final uh, weapon of choice that I like to talk about is a tactical pen. I carry a tactical pen. I also carry a knife and a gun. But I carry a tactical pen because it actually is a very good pen. It's TSA approved, which means you can carry it on an airplane. It is made out of metal. And it is used to for a couple of reasons. You can hold it low and hit somebody in the hip with it to push them out of the way. If you're in one of these large crowds, uh, peaceful protests that has suddenly become unruly and you need to get to a safe area, you can use that to push people and it doesn't look overly aggressive. You can hit somebody with it high in the face, in the eyes, or in the throat and create really, really, really 
disabling injury that can end your encounter. But again, these are high levels of force and these are only to be used when you are in fear of death or serious bodily harm. Especially for my young females out there, serious bodily harm means sexual assault. You are not allowed to be sexually assaulted. You have to make that decision now that you will do whatever it has to take to prevent a sexual assault. Okay, so if it means stabbing somebody in the eye with a tactical pen, do that. Last weapon I want to talk about is pepper spray, often called OC, which stands for oleoresin capsicum, which is the Latin for the oil of the capsaicin pepper. There are several kinds of pepper spray out there. There's pepper spray, which is kind of like a fog, which almost looks like a can of Lysol. There's pepper spray, which has a stream, which looks like the Lysol when it's on that other thing where it makes a direct line for for really accurate shots and then there's pepper foam and pepper gel pepper foam and pepper gel are very very directed weapons the good thing about pepper foam and pepper gel is they are highly concentrated they're easy to aim because you can see where they're hitting on the bad guy you notice i keep pointing to his eyes and eyebrows is where you want to hit i don't care if he closes his eyes or not People always say, what if the guy goes like this and covers his eyes up? Well, is he able to hurt you if he's covering his face? By the time he moves his hands away, they should be wet with pepper spray and you should be gone. Don't wait around to see if it works. Spray and get away. All right? It also prevents de or over-contamination or secondary contamination. So pepper foam and pepper gel hit and tend to stay on the suspect or on the attacker and then it rolls down into their eyes and into their mouth and it's the worst day of their life it works in about 83 percent of the people i've seen people who get sprayed with all this stuff and it didn't work i unfortunately am one of those 83 percent of the people that it works on and it works very well it's the worst day of my life i've been tased and i've been hit with pepper spray i'd much rather get tased than get hit with pepper spray any day i just did some training with a whole bunch of really beefy, tough Philadelphia agents. They're bail enforcement agents. They go pick up some of the worst criminals in the world who've done some very heinous crimes and they've jumped bail and they wanted me to train them on pepper spray and they all had to take it and it worked, but they were able to decon. They were able to fight through it because they were trained and that is the main thing I want for you to do is under controlled environment with a friend there, with a garden hose and with Dawn Dish Detergent is one of the best decontaminating agents that I know. It's going to take a while, but just give yourself a little taste. I'm not saying take the can and spray it in your face. I'm saying spray it in a styrofoam cup and then sniff the styrofoam cup when you have someone there to help you. Just so the first time you get exposed to it, it is not in a stressful, life-threatening situation. I don't want the first time something bad happens to you to be when there's a bad guy or bad guys trying to assault you. Are you catching me here? So the one word, what's the one word I always say is training. Training will help you survive a lot of encounters. Training. Stay tuned to Safety Man Consulting, safetyman.co for this and many more videos on how you can protect yourself in 2021 and beyond. Also, you got to protect your family and your friends and maybe that innocent third party, although we'll have another video on third party interventions. Safetyman.co, like, follow, listen, share, and subscribe. And be safe and be ready.